This program was paid for by Water of Life Church. From Water of Life Ministries in Plano, Texas, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob is speaking through his servants to the world. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying today. Let us join Doyle Davidson and others of Water of Life, sowing the Word of God in spirit and in truth. Hello, I'm Bill Davidson, servant and apostle of the Lord Jesus Christ, ministering locally to the body of Christ in Dallas, Fort Worth, Texas, sent by God to your house to declare unto you the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. First Corinthians 15, pray and four, tell us what the gospel is. How that Jesus Christ died by our sins, according to the scripture, he was buried, he rose again the third day, according to the scripture. Thank God. Spare the Lord's upon me. So not me to preach gospel to the poor, set me to heal the broken heart, preach deliverance to the captives, recovering of sight to the blind, set at liberty, then better bruise. Amen. Thank God. The word is not thee. Even in your heart, in your mouth, is a word of faith. So I preach. You confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus. Believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead. You shall be saved with the heart. Man believeth unto righteousness. With the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. I'm not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. There's a power of God unto salvation. Remember what it believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek therein. Is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by his faith. I want to welcome everyone receiving this broadcast on live stream, Roku, Apple TV, YouTube, or other devices. Thank God. Amen. Hallelujah. To my right, co-host Terry Brown. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. And to my left, co-host Kathy Davidson. Good morning. Good morning. And to your left, just a little further to my left, is Apostle, co-host, Abby Reese. Good morning. Good morning. Hallelujah. And on the wire from Colorado, Kathy Courier. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. Amen. Amen. So, what are we going to do? Katie, you got a clue? We want to do the My Girls first? Or? Oh, yes, ma'am. Let's have the My Girls.
she wrote this morning to read whenever you are ready. That explains a lot of it. Well, we'll get that in a little bit. Okay. Terry, you got anything to say? Well, I do think it's interesting that God told you in 87 through a prophecy that it was your brothers and sisters that had brought you into bondage. And that certainly was a prophecy because there was more that came. You know, it hadn't all been accomplished at that point. And so for it to be your brothers and sisters, and then today your brothers and sisters be fasting and praying for you to come out of that bondage that they, we, were a part of. It's, it's a blessing. You know? Amen. Mm -hmm. And he told me it was coming a great deliverance. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. And Paul, Apostle Paul, talked about the saints praying for him and how it would... Uh, work salvation in his life. Amen. And certainly we've compared your life with the Apostle Paul's to the degree that you have Paul's revelation. You've had a messenger from Satan buffet you because of that revelation Amen. and the visions. And But he said through his supply of the Spirit of Christ and their prayers that he would receive salvation. And I certainly expect the same for you. Amen. Thank you. Adley, you got anything to say? Uh, no, not at this time. Okay. I do want to read so that those that are listening understand. Colossians 1, 24, Who now rejoice in my sufferings for you, and fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh, for his body's sake, which is the church. Amen. That's a great blessing. And it, yes, and Paul, I mean, Paul says he rejoiced because he got to do that. Amen. And, it, and it's, it's even, in, I mean, I remember when God first showed this to me, I thought, my goodness, Paul was afflicted for the church's sake. Well, me as well. Amen. But well, guess what? Yes? Well, that goes right along with Ephesians three thirteen. I desire that you faint not at my tribulations for you which is your glory. Amen. But you know, I get happier every day. Amen. I do. The joy of the Lord is my strength. Amen. And I'm being persecuted a lot and get, getting happier. Only God can make that happen. Amen. 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 You know, we were reading a verse yesterday in the finance room, 
And God, uh, you can see the word of God actually promises you those persecutions because the Lord Jesus said, whoever is forsaken, mother, father, brother, sister, lands, houses for my sake and the gospels will receive in this time persecutions. <clears throat> receive a hundredfold and persecutions. So those, you forsook all. We know that. We've heard that. We know how you forsook your vet practice, your state-of-the-art hospital. You forsook all for Jesus' sake and the gospels. And you were promised from that by the word of God to receive a hundredfold with persecutions. <laughs> Amen. Right. Well, I'm grateful what God is doing. And I'll mention just briefly, but there are 10 cities in the heartland of America that God has sent me to. And we're going to be talking and ministering more and more in those 10 cities. Amen. And I'm convinced one of my ministries will have a church and a parsonage and ministers in each one of those cities. Now Paul said he uh, was poor and I don't know what he made many rich, but he said he possessed everything. Amen. Possessed them all. He had authority over them. And I'm beginning to see what God is after in those ten cities. And we'll have people from Plato going in every direction ministering to them. Amen. Amen. Okay. Katie as well, Courier, Captain Courier, has put together this morning a kind of a summary of things that's happened to me since 1970. Amen. We're not complete at all, but we'll add to, but we're going to post this. Katie's going to read it, and we're going to talk about where God has brought me and the purpose of the ministry. So, Katie, you want to read this? Sure will. Um, I'm going to begin at the beginning, January 2nd, 1970. God delivered me out of veterinary medicine and from that day led me by his spirit into the wilderness, which is Luke 4, 4, where he trained me and proved me. And this is done in your first person. And thou shalt remember all the way which the Lord thy God led thee forth these 40 years in the wilderness to humble thee and to prove thee and to know what was in thine heart, whether thou wouldst keep his commandments or no. Deuteronomy 8, 2. I came out of the wilderness in May 1977 and went to McKinney, Texas, where I began attending the First United Methodist Church, giving offerings and teaching a Sunday school class. In April 1980, God spoke to me, go to Plano and speak to the people of Plano. I purchased the current facility and conducted the first service, January 4th, 1981. I went on radio October 1st, 1981 and began Water of Life Christian Training School in 1983 at the direction of God. He spoke to me later, I will pour out my spirit through Water of Life Christian Training School. Amen. In April 1984, I went on television on Channel 49, Dallas-Fort Worth, with a live one-hour broadcast on Saturdays from 8 to 9 p.m. Randy Brooks and Wally Edge edited my teaching tapes from Water of Life Christian Training School in 1990, and we put together five books to distribute. Jesus did the Father's will. He rose again. The gospel is always a blessing. Jesus on the cross. God's plan of reconciliation, and later, the gospel is a blessing. And by the way, all these are available on your, on your website, doledavidson.com. I went on national and international television and satellite in 1992, beginning with Joplin, Missouri, that was February 9th, and Tulsa, Oklahoma, February 16th, and also shortwave radio on all of the C broadcasting stations. We went on internet December 1997 with our first message, Merry Christmas and Happy Hanukkah, and on January 17th, 
2007, we began streaming our programs on live stream. And that's 12 years ago today. Amen. When God sent me to Plano, he sent me to preach the gospel. And from the beginning, I preached and taught Mark 1, 14. Now, after John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God and saying, the time is fulfilled. The kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye and believe the gospel. In the summer of 1973, I began studying the foundations, Hebrews 6, 1 and 2. Therefore, leaving the principles of the doctrine of Christ, let us go on unto perfection, not laying again the foundation of repentance from dead works and of faith toward God, of the doctrine of baptisms and laying on of hands and of resurrection of the dead and of eternal judgment. From the beginning, I preached the gospel and his benefits, and on every venue God sent me on, I was preaching to the powers and principalities to the intent that now unto the principalities and powers in heavenly places might be known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Ephesians 3.10 When I went on radio, I began to plant the heavenly, heavenlies with the manifold wisdom of God. And I have put my words in thy mouth, and I have covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I might plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say in Zion, Thou art my people. Amen. Isaiah 51.16 Water of life has been independent from the first day, but not independent from God or the Lord Jesus Christ. From the days in the wilderness of Argyle, I've taught Ephesians 4, 11 and 12. And he gave some apostles and some prophets and some evangelists and some pastors and teachers for the perfecting of the saints, for the work of the ministry, for the edifying of the body of Christ. I've also taught from the beginning it is the Jesus Christ, the apostle, crucified in me. Amen. It is Jesus Christ, the prophet, crucified in me. It is Jesus Christ, the teacher, crucified in me. It is Jesus Christ, the evangelist, crucified in me. It is Jesus Christ, the pastor, crucified in me. I am nothing. It is Jesus Christ in me, speaking to you. I was blessed at the Slosser trial when an attorney who had been had, had to be a man of wisdom, asked me, do I understand that the words you speak are not your words, but you are con you're just a conduit? And I replied, you've got it, counselor. You've got it. it. And it's been for the word's sake that I have been persecuted. When affliction or persecution arises for the word's sake, Ephesians 4, Amen. it is my persecutors who have afflicted my soul that have afflict that afflicted, affected my eyesight. There is nothing wrong with my, me, my eyes. It is my soul that has been oppressed with the sins and persecutions of those God sent me to preach the gospel to. All my persecutors who are persecu were, were persecuting me didn't know that they were doing when they tried to shut my mouth. They didn't know they were trying to shut Jesus Christ in me up. And they afflicted my soul and brought me very low. But God has been raising me back up and Jesus Christ, crucified in me, is increasing in me according to my faith and through grace. In 2017, God began speaking words to me that have greatly encouraged me beginning on February 14th. Be strong and a good courage. You're going to make it. Keep pressing hard. I'm here to help you and bring you to victory, saith the Lord. On February 18th, in a tongue and interpretation, he said, where shall you go but unto the Lord? The hour is near. The season is upon you. Great tribulations are coming. Many will not be ready. Many will scoff at the warning. Many will think the church should be raptured. They're wrong. They're blind. They've been lied to as they've believed a lie. The season is near. Be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. The tribulation period that's spoken of in the scripture is surely going to take place in your lifetime. And following these words of prophecy, the Lord would say to you, much authority will reign and rule in this house during the great tribulation. Many will look to you for direction. Many will come to your presence to drink of the water that flows out of this house. Humble yourself, except it's me, saith the Lord, that walked you through these past eight years to humble you, to strengthen you, to encourage you, that you will be strong in the midst of what's coming upon your land. You will be strong and many will come for your help, saith the Lord. 
On February 18th, in a prophecy, the Lord said, Be bold, be strong in the Lord and the power of his might. Many will come and hear your words. I will strengthen you and uphold you by the right hand, Jesus, of my righteousness. Beware of false prophets, for many will come saying, Who raised you up and who gave you authority over us? Amen. February 22nd, the Lord said, I will come with vengeance and recompense to save you, saith the Lord of hosts. And that is Jesus. On May 22nd, he said, I've chosen you, sent you to the four corners of the earth to deliver my word without despair or fear, saith the Lord of hosts. Today, January 17th, there are many in the body of Christ who are fasting and praying for my eyesight to be restored. The Lord has told me on more than one occasion, I am here in person to save you, for you are my brother. Amen. Well, thank you. Thank God. Thank Courier. Good job. I thank Catherine for putting all that together. Amen. There's more. More ahead. What can I say? It's God. It's the Lord. I take no credit whatsoever. Just God. Just Jesus. Amen. What time is it? It is 1023. 1023. Isn't it interesting that it would be today, 12 years ago, that you started live stream, start speaking live, uh, that would also be coming about that we'd be fasting and praying today for you because when that was originally planned, there was no thought of it being 12 years no. from the day. Uh, I mean, we didn't even start talking about this till last night, putting right. it together today, and then today realizing it was this day in 2007. And but the Lord knew when He set up this fast, and I think that's that's really interesting. It's really sweet to see the plan of God doing this on this day. That's pretty good anniversary celebration, huh? I'd say so. <laughs> I'd say so. I want to say. It's amazing to read in Isaiah, I believe it is, 51 or somewhere there, about laying the foundation Amen. and planting the heavens. Is that right? Amen. Amen. Do that by the Spirit of God. The foundation is the foundation of the Apostle Prophet, Jesus Christ being the chief cornerstone. But to plant the heavenlies, you do it by the wisdom of God Amen. through Ephesians 3.10, the, the uh, pact of the powers and the principalities in the heavenlies be made known by the church the manifold wisdom of God. Amen. And that's what I do. I've been at it all these years. And I appreciate God ministered through me for years. But it's the day that seemed right to talk more to you about planting the heavenlies after uh, and laying the foundations. So I just know what I'm doing. I'm just a servant of God. And you heard Kathy D. Reed, it's not me, it's Jesus Christ, the apostle in me. Amen. It's Jesus Christ, the prophet in me. Amen. It's Jesus Christ, the teacher in me. Jesus Christ, the, the master in me. Jesus Christ, the evangelist in me. And guess what? It's Jesus Christ crucified in every, all five of them. Amen. Amen. It's not him in the flesh. Amen. You see, I preach the crucifixion. I preach the re resurrection. I preach the gospel. And I am from the beginning in 19, well, 1970s, but 1981, when I went on 
from the church here start preaching. That's all I preach. Amen? Amen. And it says that in Isaiah 51, uh, referring to you being a conduit for the words of the Lord. Isaiah 51, that verse says, I've put my words in thy mouth. Right. And, and I've covered thee in the shadow of mine hand, that I may plant the heavens and lay the foundations of the earth and say and design, thou art my people. So right there he says, it's his words in your mouth that plant the heavens. Amen. My God. Amen. Where do we go from here? Anybody got a suggestion? <laughs> We're all looking at you. They're looking at me. <laughs> well, I think God's looking at me too. Amen. Like, you ready to move forward? I just want to say again, my love, my faith, Grace, peace to all, and blessing to all that have chosen to pray for me and pass today. You know. Katie, I'd like you to turn to Genesis where God said, spoke to Abraham and told him that he would be a blessing. Can you find that, somebody? Chapter 12, I believe. 12? Yes. Seven. Chapter 12, verse 1. Okay. It says, Now the Lord had said unto Abram, Get thee out of thy country, and from thy kindred, and from thy father's house, unto a land that I will show thee, and I will make thee a great nation, and I will bless thee, and make thy name great, and thou shalt be a blessing. And I will bless them that bless thee, and curse him that curses thee, and in thee shall all families of the earth be blessed. January the 4th, 1970, I left. 121 Veterinary Hospital. My practice with this word, or two words, obey me. Amen. I had no idea where I was going. None whatsoever. And by the way, I want to say, Dr. Charles Rodney Butler, my partner that God brought to 121 in 1968, became my partner and then uh, assumed ownership of it when I left. But Dr. Butler is back visiting with us, talking to me. Thank God what a blessing he is. Amen. Amen. You went and got him to be your partner, if I remember the story I right. You went, went to go talk to him. I went to his office. You knew his reputation. I sure did. It was, i tell you what they said. This guy's one of the best. I said, that's what I want. Amen. Now you've said there, there wouldn't be many you would be willing to partner with. <laughs> What'd you say? You said there were not many you would have been willing to partner with. You've got that right for sure. <laughs> <laughs> it would have to be one of the best to be your partner. It was. He was nothing short of very good. And then you said that it was set around Texas. Those two together made one team. Uh -oh. And there wasn't too many that would top them. More than one said it. Yeah. Bam, bam. Good morning, Rodney. <laughs> love you, friend. And I send my love to you and all of your family. Now, what am I going to do? Is it time to praise and worship God? Amen. Huh? Amen. Amen. What time is it? It is 1031. 31? Yes. I've, we've heard enough about me. Now we're going to praise God about you. 
Amen. I thank God for all of you. Amen. I can't say anything, but thank God for God, Jesus, you, the ministry, everything. That's all I can say is thank you. Amen. Let's go. Make a joyful noise to the glory of the earth. Make a loud noise to Jesus in prayer. Make a joyful noise to the glory of the earth. Make a loud noise to Jesus in prayer. I will make a great day to praise Him. Thank you. 
the Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, 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 Father. Thank you, Jesus. Mercy, grace, mercy, grace, mercy, grace, be multiplied out of you through the knowledge of God and the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Kathy D. will be ministering to the ladies at 1210. I want to thank everybody for fasting and praying. This day for me, God gets all the glory. Amen. God bless you. See you next time. Bye-bye. Amen. We invite you to visit Water of Life Church at 1621 18th Street in Plano, Texas. Or for further information, call area code 972-578-8082. That's 972-578-8082. Or write Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. That's Doyle Davidson, Post Office Box 861327, Plano, Texas 75086. This program was paid for by Water of Life Church.